Living in Ohio, we know severe weather can strike at any time of the year, not just the spring. And that's why the 10 Weather Impact Team is always working to keep you informed and keep your family safe. From a record-setting year of twisters in 2024 to hail, lightning, and flooding, we're thrown a lot of curveballs by Mother Nature here in Ohio. And that's why the first step to any severe weather plan is being prepared. Coming up on our complete severe weather awareness guide, we'll cover this topic as well as all different severe storm threats you can expect to see here in Central Ohio. After a record setting year in the state of Ohio, thunderstorms and the threats they bring are top of mind. This season in Ohio can be a time of increased anxiety for many of us, but getting prepared can be done in three easy steps. Get those weather warnings, having a plan, and taking action. Now, getting those warnings in real time is top priority. Warnings can come right to your phone, alerting you of severe weather wherever you are, as long as you have a few basic settings checked. Now, in an iPhone, under settings, scroll to notifications, then scroll down to government alerts. In an Android, go to settings, safety, and emergency, then into wireless emergency alerts to get set up. Make sure emergency alerts for iPhone or extreme threats and severe threats for Android are on and that they always play sound. That means that you'll hear those no matter even if the phone is off. Alerts are also available in Spanish. Now, of course, for this to work, it requires that your phone is charged and that you have service. Even on some good days, that service may be spotty for some of us. And when storm strikes, that service can go down. The best way to make sure that you get the information you need is a good old fashioned weather radio. Now, they broadcast directly from the National Weather Service, relaying critical information even during network outages. You can usually find these weather radios at big box stores, hardware stores, or online, starting at about 20 bucks. One of my favorites is the old crank version. Doesn't need batteries or to be plugged in. This weather radio even has a flashlight. Now, as long as your weather radio has power, you and your family will be notified of life-threatening weather in real time. So, now that you have that information, you need to have a plan. When a warning is issued, that means threatening weather is occurring or likely, and you need to act now. That's why having a plan ahead of time is so important. Now to get started, you probably wanna to put together a very simple emergency kit. That might include first aid items, hand sanitizer, water, really important medication, identification, non-perishable food, and of course, don't forget your pets. And make sure your family knows where this kit is. Also review with family and loved ones what to do and where to seek shelter and safety in each of the following threats, because they're different. A tornado, high winds, hail, lightning, and flooding. In addition to it being in your home or where you live, you should also have a plan for where you work, when you're at school, and even if you're outdoors as well. Last but not least, number three, take action. If you've received a warning and you have your plan, then this last part should be pretty simple. Knowing what to do when severe weather strikes can keep you and your family safe and be prepared. That means you can take action quickly and respond to everything that these thunderstorms can throw our way. So before we start talking a bit about thunderstorms, it kind of helps to know how they form. Now, average thunderstorms can form in a bunch of different environments, but in order to get strong or severe thunderstorms, you need four things. If you're missing any one of those ingredients, again, you might have an average garden variety thunderstorm, but you're not going to get severe weather. In order for any thunderstorm to form, you're gonna need an initial push, lift. Oftentimes a cold front or a warm front or a center of low pressure kind of gives that initial push or that oomph. Then you need to have moisture. If you don't have moisture, you're not gonna get a stronger severe thunderstorm. Oftentimes that moisture comes in on warm southerly winds. You can feel that humidity. That's kind of the fuel for the storms. Then in order to get that storm going, you need unstable air. Oftentimes that's cold air aloft compared to that warm air on the bottom. Just like in your house or where you live, that cold air won't sink, the warm air will rise. That is called instability. Finally, you need wind shear, one or both kinds of wind shear. Speed shear is where you have two cars on a highway, for example, one going faster than the other. Another is directional shear, where the wind is going different directions at different levels. Any one or both of those kinds of shear will promote the thunderstorm to maintain itself and actually not collapse. 
those four ingredients are what forms strong to severe storms. Now, what do we mean by a severe thunderstorm? Any one or unfortunately all three of these can happen. Hail, greater than one inch in diameter, wind gusts over 58 miles an hour, and or a tornado. And oftentimes, as we experienced last year quite a bit, you can have two or three of these things happening at once. Now, breaking down a watch or a warning, it's important to remember these things. The differences are simple, but very important. When the National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm, a tornado, or a flash flood watch, that means watch out. Conditions are favorable for development of one of those things. When a warning is issued, that means that it's occurring. Take action, seek shelter in an interior room, have your plan and ready to enact your plan, and stay away from windows. One other thing to keep in mind during the storm, stay inside until the warning ends, stay away from those doors and windows, most importantly, stay tuned and stay connected. Yes, TV is a great way to stay connected. You can also stream, download the 10 TV mobile app, many different ways to stay connected and stay on top of the storm. Tornadoes are some of the strongest forms of severe weather we can see here in Ohio. And last year we set a record with 74 tornadoes striking the Buckeye State. Put those on a map and they look something like this. Each one of those lines, a path carved by a tornado around Ohio just last year. And we know these tornadoes don't just strike during severe weather season. Each of the 12 months of our calendar has recorded at least one tornado over the last 50 plus years. In fact, last year we had a tornado in December. So with all that in mind, we want to break down how these storms actually form. It all starts with the winds. You get surface winds and winds aloft blowing in different directions that creates rotation in the atmosphere. Put it together with thunderstorm updrafts and that rotation can lift and tilt down toward the surface. From there, we form something called a wall cloud. A wall cloud is the precursor to a tornado. If it continues to build and works its way down to the ground, that's when it actually does become a tornado. If it doesn't touch the ground, it's just considered a funnel cloud. Our job as meteorologists is to warn you ahead of time when these types of severe weather could occur. And it all starts with a watch. That means be prepared. Conditions are favorable for tornadoes, but we're not quite there yet. From there, we upgrade to a warning. This is when a tornado has either been detected by radar or seen by a person. A tornado emergency, that's the highest level of warning. This means not only has a tornado been detected, it is on the ground and doing considerable damage. If all of this seems a little confusing, let's put it in terms of baking. Let's talk about a cupcake watch. This means the ingredients are in place, have a plan, but we don't have cupcakes just yet. A cupcake warning, well, the baked goods are done. The storms are here, it's time to take action. Of course, that tornado action plan does need to include some important steps, including grabbing important documents and pets, going to your safe place, and staying connected to get the latest alerts until those storms have passed. And the reason this is so important is just because of the damage that tornadoes can cause. I wanna show you how strong these winds can get. The weakest level tornado, EF0, that's gonna cause minor damage to roofs and trees. We upgrade from there to an EF1. Lots of shingles missing, power poles coming down at this point, and it only gets worse from here. We upgrade this to an EF2. That's when roofs start to get blown off of houses and cars flipped over. And EF3, we're destroying entire floors of a house. And EF4, that's leveling even well-built houses. Cars are thrown great distances. And once we get to an EF5, there's nothing left but a concrete slab, and sometimes even that can get ripped up from the surface. Of course, with so much danger related to this form of severe weather, our job is to keep you safe at home, and that's what the 10TV Weather Impact Team will do all throughout the year. So what if a tornado warning has been issued? Where do you go? What do you do? Well, oftentimes, that depends where you're at at the time. Single family home, a condo, freestanding unit, it's actually very simple. And some of these guidelines and some advice apply no matter where you're at. In this situation, you want to keep in mind to put as many walls between you and the tornado as possible. So some places you might think about, garage, bedroom, kitchen, or living room, those are exterior rooms with only one wall between you and the twister. How about an interior room? A closet, for example, a hallway, those stairs, or a bathroom 
Oftentimes a bathroom is a safer place because of the plumbing around the bathroom and because of the availability in some cases of a tub. Avoid windows, doors, and outside walls, and cover yourself with blankets or mattresses for protection. And if you have a basement, that is the safest place to be. Getting below ground, out of the path of the tornado, out of the path of that flying debris is very, very important. So again, basement, number one place to go in a tornadic situation. What if you live in an apartment, a high-rise building, or a condo? If you have time, and oftentimes you will have minutes, as that tornado warning is issued, go to the lowest floor possible. Bathrooms, laundry room, garages are the best. If you can't get down there, an interior room. Again, the same logic applies. Put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. And as a last resort, or if you can't get to one of those places, it does not hurt to have that extra layer of protection for your head, a blanket, pillows, or even a helmet to shield you from debris. Now, what if you're in your car? A dangerous place to be if you can, drive to a safe shelter. If you cannot, and that tornado is bearing down on you, get down in your car and again, cover your head. And if the situation is dire, you can find a ditch or a ravine, not unlike a basement, get low, get down as low as possible and cover your head with anything you possibly can. Now, what if you're in a mobile home? Now, again, a situation where you wanna get out of the mobile home, Hopefully you'll have a bit of time. You want to move to a safe shelter. Most importantly about a mobile home, they are not safe to ride out a tornado. You want to get out, move to safety, be ready, and that means having a plan. And that last bit of advice, no matter where you live or where you are, always be ready and always have a plan. Now you may be surprised to find out that one of the scariest parts of a thunderstorm, lightning, is caused by something we've all experienced. It's essentially a giant discharge of static electricity. There's a lot going on inside those thunderstorms with ice and water racing up and down, separating that electrical charge, the negatives from the positives, and that's where our lightning flash begins. So we'll walk you through quickly. The first thing is that separation of the negatives and the positives, and then starting down from the cloud, that's called the step leader. As a leader draws positive charge from the ground and those two begin to meet, that charge be actually begins that electrical flow of current, then that's what we see. Now that flash happens at the speed of light, 60,000 miles per second, and once that path is established, then that flash can happen or flicker several times over and over again until that lightning charge is balanced. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that takes place in less than a second. Do what you can to keep you and your family safe. Very important to keep that in mind is that most of the lightning that we see is from the cloud down to the ground or the cloud within the cloud. Other types of lightning happen from the cloud to the sky or from one part of the cloud to another or very rarely from the ground up to the cloud. Please, if you hear thunder, when thunder roars, go indoors. Very simple to keep you and your family safe. A vehicle, a good alternative. If you're outside and you're stuck, crouch low to the ground. Crouch into a ball on the balls of your feet. Round yourself, minimize your contact with the ground. Do not take shelter under trees, and most importantly, stay away from water. So hopefully, a little bit about how lightning forms and what you need to do to keep you and your family safe. One of the most underrated dangers when it comes to severe weather is actually flooding. In fact, when it comes to all of the major things that you think of in a severe weather scenario, flooding ends up being the most deadly. So here's some information that you need to know. Six inches of water, all it takes to sweep you off your feet, you up that to a foot and now you're moving a small car. 18 inches of water, that could move a truck or an SUV. So it takes surprisingly little water to cause some big impacts across the region. Of course, when it comes to flooding, there are multiple different kinds and there are different alerts that come along with those. If we're expecting just minor flooding, areas that usually see ponding water, areas that, well, you're kind of used to water collecting, that's where we would likely see a flood advisory issued. Minor flooding, not expected to be a major threat to life or property. From there, we upgrade to what's called an aerial flood warning. This is life or property threatening flooding, but it's gonna happen gradually. We're talking greater than six hours of time for these flood waters to come up, so you'll have time to respond and take appropriate action. The more dangerous type of flooding is related to this. It kind of impacts the same areas, areas that were not expected to usually get flooding. It's flash flooding. This is life or property threatening flooding that happens rapidly. This could be on the order of minutes to just a few hours. When you have a flash flood warning come out, these are the types of alerts that you need to respond to immediately as situations 
conditions could change very rapidly and become dangerous very quickly. The last type of flood alert actually has to deal with river flooding. That's where the just standard flood warning comes into place. Again, this impacts waterways, streams, rivers, anything like that. When those rise up out of their banks from prolonged rainfall, that's when you could have a flood warning issued. And of course, you may have to move to higher ground. Along the lines of flooding, we have another thing to be concerned about. That is hydroplaning. The car in red there losing traction on the wet roads. The car in blue doing a little bit better. There are several reasons we could see this type of situation happen, including possibility of excessive speed on wet roads, low tread depth on your tires, deeper water ponding on the roads. That's when it typically happens or too high or too low tire pressure. All of those can be factors in terms of causing a car to hydroplane. Larger tire width could also contribute as a factor. We'll leave you with this. Some flood need to know safety tips. The saying, turn around, don't drown. If you are under a flood warning and you're instructed to do so, make sure you move to higher ground, especially those river and flash flood warnings. And of course, stay connected throughout the event. That's how you'll know the latest updates as soon as they're issued. As we wrap up our coverage on severe weather preparation, there's one final topic we want to talk about, and that's emergency communications. And the folks here at the Ohio Emergency Management Agency, they want to make sure that you're ready with multiple ways to get alerts and information during severe weather. This is the Emergency Operations Center for the state. What you're looking at is the nerve center for emergency communications in the state of Ohio. I'm seeing signs around that say like highway patrol, transportation, yes. aviation. Um, all these people need to know when weather is impacting the state. Yes. So, and that's exactly what this room does. Like I said, it is a coordination entity. We can come together, you know, we can reach out to the partners. And just like the state stays prepared for severe weather by having multiple lines of communication in disasters, you should practice this at home as well. A severe weather can happen anywhere, any time of the day or any time of the year. So having multiple methods to receive emergency communications is very important. One of the best, a NOAA weather radio. You can have emergency notifications, weather watches, weather warnings, and you can set it to your area specifically. Many counties also have emergency communication lists that can send alerts to your phone. Mass notification systems are used throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, different counties use different methods, so I would suggest contacting your county emergency management agency to see what's available for you to receive alerts and warnings. Another best practice for emergency alerts, having the 10TV app installed on your phone before storms strike. So the news and weather apps are fantastic sources. You can go and download the station that you like the very best. The 10TV app is quite nice. I actually have that on my phone. Sirens work too, but just know you shouldn't be using them as your primary source of alert communication, and they're not meant to be heard in your home. They are designed and intended for people who are outdoors. These sirens, when they sound, are alerting you that you have enough time to get to safety and that you can get to a good location. So understanding that they are not necessarily going to be heard in your home is very important. So one of the main takeaways is to make sure that you have multiple ways of getting alerts and important information during severe weather and have those methods figured out ahead of time. You don't want to be scrambling for information when severe weather strikes. We hope the information we shared has given you what you need to be confident in facing the next round of storms in central Ohio. With preparation and planning ahead of time, Mother Nature isn't such a powerful foe. And don't worry if this seems like a lot to take in. Our team will always make sure you're prepared with a detailed forecast on any weather impacts that are ahead. Stay safe, stay informed, and stay with 10TV on air, online, and streaming on 10TV Plus whenever severe weather threatens.